Praise the Lord. This is Bill McMurdo and I'm going to be looking today at Scotland's Stone of Destiny. The Lord has really put this message on my heart. I really want to share this. It's so vital. I speak a lot about the Stone of Destiny and I, I've written quite a bit about it as well. And um, a little bit of background to the Stone of Destiny. But first of all, I want to read uh, some scripture. And um, it's from Genesis chapter 28 and beginning at verse 10. And Jacob went out from Beersheba and went toward Haran. And he lighted upon a certain place and tarried there all night because the sun was set. And he took of the stones of that place and put them for his pillows and lay down in that place to sleep. And he dreamed and behold, a ladder set up in the earth and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God ascending and descending on it. And behold, the Lord, or Yahweh, stood above it and said, I am the Lord, or I am Yahweh, God of Abraham thy father, and the God of Isaac. The land whereon thou liest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed. And thy seed shall be as the dust of the earth, and thou shalt spread abroad to the west, and to the east, and to the north, and to the south, and in thee, and in thy seed shall all the families of the earth be blessed. And behold, I am with thee, and will keep thee in all places whither thou goest, and will bring thee again into this land, for I will not leave thee until I have done that which I have spoken to thee of. And Jacob awaked out of his sleep, and he said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I knew it not. And he was afraid and said, How dreadful is this place! This is none other but the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. And Jacob rose up early in the morning and took the stone that he had put for his pillows and set it up for a pillar and poured oil upon the top of it. And he called the name of that place Bethel, but the name of that city was called Luz at the first. And Jacob vowed a vow, saying, If God will be with me and will keep me in this way that I go, and will give me bread to eat and raiment to put on, so that I come again to my father's house in peace, then shall the Lord be my God. And this stone which I have set for a pillar shall be God's house, and of all that thou shalt give me, I will surely give the tenth unto thee. I want to share with you, friends, a very to me, a powerful prophetic message that the Lord has given me out of this. But I, I want to give you a little bit of background about the Stone of Destiny uh, and its remarkable place uh, in our nation, in Scotland, in, and indeed the whole of the UK. So in 1996, the Stone of Scone, as it was called, was returned amid much fanfare to the Scottish people. Uh, the stone had been captured by Edward the first in a foray north in 1296, 700 years previously. For years it sat under Edward's chair in Westminster Abbey and monarchs of England and initially then Britain or the United Kingdom were crowned on it. It is widely known that the Stone of Destiny is Jacob's pillar or Jacob's pillow, which we've just read about, being the stone Jacob used as a pillow the night he dreamt of angels ascending and descending the heavenly ladder. And we've just heard that in Genesis chapter 28. Uh, so vital to our understanding is the statement made by Jacob that this place is none other but the house of God and the gate of heaven. Now in my little book, Scotland Land of Destiny, I speak about this and I say that the stone of destiny is therefore the very house of God and the gate of heaven. And from that time on, the stone became known as the Bethel stone. What's important to understand is the very presence of that stone, whatever it was, symbolised the place where God had an earthly dwelling. Uh, kings of Judah in Old Covenant days, Old Testament days, were crowned on it. It's also believed that kings of Israel would borrow the stone to be coronated on it by some scholars. And we just need to understand, I don't want to get too deep, deep into this because it's in that little book, Scotland Land of Destiny. I think I've covered it in other places as well, perhaps. But that the British royal family is descended from both branches of the tribe of Judah, uh, born to uh, Tamar, um, the Pharaoh's line and the Zara line. The Pharaoh's line, of course, is the line which King David came from and which Jesus was uh, descended from in the natural, uh, but the Pharaoh's line moved away uh, from the rest of the tribes and they moved into the Iberian Peninsula, they moved eventually settled in Ireland and set up their own royal line. And when Jerusalem fell, Jeremiah the prophet 
and Barak his scribe came with some um, stories say that it was two princesses of the house of David, Tiatefi and Skota. Others say that Skota came at a different time, but but basically Tiatefi in particular married into the Zara line of Judah, which were called the Milesians. And um, Jeremiah also brought with him when he uh, came to Ireland, initially to to Spain, then to Ireland, he brought with him the Stone of Destiny, as we now know it today, or Jacob's Pillow, Jacob's Pillar Stone, the stone on which kings of Israel and Judah were crowned upon, or coronated upon. And it then became part of the coronation ceremony of the Irish High Kings, and then Fergus the Great brought it over here to Scotland, uh, ostensibly borrowed it, but it never went back. So Scots kings were crowned on it. And then, of course, Edward the Confessor, who knew what the stone signified, who knew what it was, he came up and he took it down to England, where it was for 700 years. Now, that's the background. I could get into a lot of detail about that, folks. Uh, some of you know that background. And I'll tell you what's remarkable, just to get us into that prophetic frame of mind, is that I've discovered in recent times a lot of people um, who I would identify as the remnant. And I'm not just talking about Christians here, I'm talking about people who are what are popular known, or what is popular known as being awake at this time, awake to Babylon, awake to globalism, awake to the system that is trying to oppress us. A lot of these people are getting revelation about the Stone of Destiny and what it means, what it is, what it signifies. And, and of course, there's a whole bunch of stuff off that. The British Royal House, for example, um, the, the Scottish uh, dynasty of, of kings, which fed into the, 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 the Windsor line as it is now. These kings and queens were all descended from King David. Okay? And so it was fitting and right that they be crowned upon the Stone of Destiny. Now, I know that's a lot for some folk to take in because I'm just really rattling it out here. Um and giving you, you know, quite a lot in a short burst of time here. But there's, this can all be studied out. I've got books on it. Scotland, Land of Destiny, The Key of David, um, other books that speak about these things, and other books that are available. And a lot is available online on this. So you can get up to speed on all this. What the Stone of Destiny, as it's called, uh, that now sits in Edinburgh Castle. And that's what I want to get into. I really want to talk about why is it in Scotland. Because... When it came up to Scotland, I know quite a few people were upset by that. British Israelites were upset because they believed that the, the stone should remain in Westminster Abbey. But I believe then, and I believe even stronger now, that the Stone of Destiny came to Scotland for a purpose because Scotland is the land of destiny. And a lot of the clue to that um, is in the text of Genesis chapter 28. And that's what I want us to look at. You know, we're basing this on the Bible. And let me just say right up, right out here, right up, up front. I believe that that stone that's in Edinburgh Castle is Jacob's pillow stone. It's interesting that he started off uh, sleeping and it, it said stones, but it, in the morning it was one stone. I don't know what happened during the night. But that stone that's in Edinburgh Castle, I believe to be Jacob's pillow or Jacob's pillar stone. Uh, you might not believe that. But what I'm telling you is, because the legends, the traditions, the myths, and, I, and by myth I don't mean it's not true, I just mean in, in the strictest sense of a myth, a story you know, that goes back into antiquity. So I don't like using the word myth, but I'll use the word legend or tradition, that this is Jacob's pillar stone. The reason I'm saying that, folks, is that even if it were not the case, and I believe 100% that it is the case, but even if it was not the case that it was Jacob's pillar stone. The very fact that it has that reputation still has a prophetic import for us on what God wants to do in Scotland at this time, looking back to what the pillar stone meant to Jacob, as we've just read. Because he, uh, the sun set, and he, he says he took one of the stones of that place and put it at his head, and he lay down in that place to sleep. That's what it says in the... The New King James, okay? Uh, it doesn't say that in the King James. It just says uh, stones. It mentions stones. 
plural. Okay, but the, of course the New King James changed it a little bit and said uh, one of those stones. It says he took of the stones of that place in the King James and put them for his pillows. So anyway, the point is this, that he took of the stones, he lay down on them and then he dreamed and he saw a ladder set up on the earth. A ladder was set up on earth and its top reached to heaven and there the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Now what's happening here, and this is so important for us prophetically for Scotland, is that Jacob saw an open heaven and he saw a ladder. We would say, maybe use modern language, there was a portal opened here on earth into heaven and there was angelic activity. Please understand what I'm saying here. Okay, Scotland needs to be under an open heaven and we need angels coming up and down that portal. We need angelic activity at this time to destroy the kingdom of darkness, to destroy the Babylonian order that has been firmly entrenched in Scotland, to dispel the darkness and the wickedness that's going on. We need angelic help. And you know, in, in a remnant group, remnant army rising, the Lord's been speaking to us a lot about he is the Lord of hosts. He is the captain of heaven's armies. He is the king of the angelic hosts. And there are many of them. Uh, and every one of them is mighty and powerful. But Jacob saw an open heaven. And he saw angels. He saw angelic activity. And then Yahweh was there. And Yahweh spoke to him. Scotland needs all these things right now. That's why I believe, brothers and sisters, that the stone of destiny is here in Scotland at this time. Don't forget Richard McPhee, uh, that prophecy from 1920, he prophesied about the stone being in Scotland. And of course that was um, many, many years before it was brought up, 76 years before uh, it was brought up. But that was after 700 years down in England at Westminster Abbey. So Jacob saw an open heaven. And so that stone was a portal. And then he got promises that in thee and in, in thy seed, God said to, to Jacob, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. You know, we believe for a mighty move of God in Scotland and that every family and nation on earth will eventually be blessed at, from that move of God coming out of Scotland. And then he said, Jacob said, Surely Yahweh's in this place, and I knew it not. You see, there was hidden glory that Jacob didn't see before he had the dream. And he, to have that dream, he had to have that portal. He had to have the stone of destiny, as we now call it, because it spoke of his destiny and it spoke of planet Earth's destiny. And he said, This is none other. Or this how dreadful is this place? How how awesome is this place? Amen. Uh, how awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven. So what he's saying is this stone was a house. It's strange language. And it's a gate, it's a portal to heaven. There's a physical stone that is emblematic of a house and it is also a portal to heaven now that speaks about you and I brothers and sisters as lively or living stones not cut out with hands not you know fashioned by tools but that we are living stones in the house of God it's speaking about prophetically about both Christ himself and indeed the church remember Jesus said to Nathaniel he says uh, he said, I saw you under the, the tree. And then he says, you're going to see the Son of Man with angels ascending and descending upon him. So Jesus was saying, I'm a portal to heaven. And then, of course, the church, which is made up of living stones, the house of God, uh, is also a house. That is the house of God. It, God dwells there. The presence of God is there. God lives in the house. He lives in you. He lives in me. He lives in us individually. He lives in us collectively or corporately as, as 
a group or as a church. But you know, we're also a portal to heaven and angels are ascending and descending upon our lives because we are the gate of heaven. We are a ladder to heaven. We are the way that people can connect with God. And we have his presence in us. And so the stone of destiny, Jacob's pillar stone, becomes a symbol, a metaphor, an emblem, if you like, or a type. It's a type of Christ. Remember when it spoke about uh, that they followed the rock in the wilderness? Well, that word uh, rock is, of course, it's the rock. It's not a rock. And many scholars believe, I'm, I'm one of them, I'm one of the folks that believe this. Many people believe that when it speaks about uh, they followed the rock in the wilderness, that that's actually speaking about uh, the stone of destiny. And the stone of destiny is a type of Christ. It is a type. It, it, it is emblematic of Christ. It's speaking about Christ. And of course then it says, uh, it's in First Corinthians chapter 10, we'll read it. Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant. God doesn't want us ignorant. How that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and were all baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink. Now watch this. For they drank of that spiritual rock and that followed them uh, and that rock was Christ. Now, I'm, I'm, I said that they followed the rock, but the rock followed them. Um, the rock went with them, in other words. But they were following Christ in the wilderness, weren't they? And Christ was following them. So the rock that he's speaking about here is a type of Christ. So if that's the stone of destiny, what's sitting through in Edinburgh Castle? You can go and see that, I believe, even during the COVID era. You can still get in to see it. But uh, certainly uh, I've been to see it, and others have. And that sitting there is a type of Christ. And it went through the wilderness with the Israelites. And it's saying the presence of Christ is in Scotland, in the very heart of Scotland, of course, Edinburgh Castle. The stone is here called Christ. Scotland's stone of destiny is a symbol of Christ. It represents Christ Jesus' kingdom. And the, the passage refers to Moses striking the rock to get water for the Israelites. Uh, now, of course, he struck it once, but then he struck it the second time, which was uh, an error, and he, he lost his right to get the promised land for that. But there are many prophecies about the stone of destiny. Uh, one of them is this. It's a... A Latin one, but translated, it reads like this. If fates go right, wherever the stone is found, the Scots shall monarchs of that realm be found. And that was in a piece of wood attached to the stone when Edward I carried it away in 1296. And it became historical fact when James VI of Scotland ascended the English throne in 1603. Hector Booth, the Scottish historian, records this ancient prophecy this way. If the prophecy is not false, wherever the hoary pillow is found, by right out of the free nation of Scots, kings will be taken. And it's really saying that wherever this crown, sorry, wherever this stone is, then Scots will wear the crown in that land. And of course, our queen, our present queen and monarchs, uh, since James VI, uh, have all been descended from Scottish kings. And then Sir Walter Scott translated an Irish version into English like this. Unless the fates be faithful, Sorry, unless the fates be faithless grown or prophet's voice be vain, but there is found this sacred stone, the wanderer's race shall reign. The word Scott means wanderer. The stone is with the wanderer's race. And although that stone initially came from the Holy Land or Palestine, uh, where it's, it's native to there, uh, it is a, very much a Scottish stone now. Uh, because it belongs to Scotland, but it, but it belongs to the whole of Britain. But its true place is in Scotland because it's a symbol of Christ. And, you know, I'm not saying that we should worship it. I'm not saying that we should make some kind of shrine to it. I'm not saying that there's, it has magical powers. It does apparently have powers that if the wrong person is being crowned, the stone cries out, apparently. 
that's that's one of the legends. And but what I am saying to you is is it has a prophetic symbolic message for us that Scotland needs an open heaven. Scotland needs the Lord to speak to us. That Scotland is the place where the house of God must stand uh, between two worlds, between two dimensions, the dimension of the glory realm and this earth. And it's in this place that the house of God, I, I just believe that the Lord is saying to us the importance of Scotland, the importance of Scotland in God's plan and purpose for the ages is that the great end time Elijah move of God will be in Scotland. It'll, it'll, it'll start there in a way that will spark all the nations and it will flood Britain, it will go over to Europe and eventually cover the whole earth. It's so important to understand that the stone of destiny symbolises that last day move of God that we're all longing for, that we're all yearning for. The Lord is in this place and I did not know it, Jacob said. And then he called the name of that place Bethel after he poured oil on top of it, which means the house of God. You have to understand the importance of Scotland being that portal, of Scotland being a place where the end time remnant army of God, the church of God, the true church, the remnant church, the remnant saints of God, will experience God in such a way. This is coming, folks. This is coming in our very near future, that we will experience God in such a way that it will strike terror into the hearts of Babylonian rulers and kings. You know, this was all prophesied. Uh, the Covenanters prophesied this. Richard Cameron prophesied that from Scotland would go forth a fire that would burn uh, what we would call today Babylon or the, the, the globalist powers. Um, Jean Darnall prophesied mighty things coming out of Scotland. Many others have seen similar visions and, and said similar things. But the Bible, the Word of God, I'm standing on Genesis chapter 28. You know, and you say, well, what if, what if it isn't Jacob's pillar stone that's through the Edinburgh Castle? What if that's all just some kind of great story, but it's not true? Well, who cares? It's still a prophetic uh, picture for us. It's still a prophetic thing to grab onto. But I, I believe it's true. I believe it's real. And I believe that a lot of people are coming into that revelation. I see it. I hear folks talking about I actually feel I actually sorry, I actually hear people talking about it in hushed tones. Uh, that it's some kind of secret that is being revealed to people. Uh but you know, I've been speaking about this for many a long year. And um, as I said, I've written about it extensively, I've preached about it. There are books on it, you can you can get them um on the Stone of Destiny and its importance to us. Uh a lot of stuff, you know is peripheral to what we're talking about but much of it is integral to what we're talking about which is why is that stone here why are our kings and queens crowned on it uh, one of the reasons being of course that they're descended from king david and that's so important as well so if you're somebody right now who's saying well our royal family's part of the problem because they're part of the elite well let me let me say this to you right that's why we are commanded to pray for them that's why we're told in First Timothy, pray for kings and all that are in authority because there is a prophetic understanding amongst certain people that in the last days the British royal family will turn to the Lord and be really in fire for Jesus, that there'll be a fountain of cleansing opened up for the house of David. You can get that in Zechariah and many believe that applies to a royal family. And of course, uh, all the royal families of Europe are all linked uh, anyway by blood and ancestry and indeed even the presidents of America have um, a, a link genetically to the royal house that's a whole other uh, message maybe when somebody else to take up but the point I'm trying to get to you across to you is this is that if we have a revival in a royal house you get the head right, the body will fall. You see, when the head's messed up, the body gets messed up. That's why we see when kings were evil and wicked in the Bible that the people fell into idolatry, the people fell into to sin and darkness and uh, military defeat. But when the head was right, when the kings were right, 
the body, uh, that is, the people followed, and blessing ensued. And, and in fact, you can actually see that in the Old Covenant, revivals took place when there was a good king on the throne who whose heart was soft towards the Lord and who um, brought about laws and stuff that honoured God. So we need our royal family to honour the Lord. I don't care, in a sense, how wicked uh, they have been in the sense of the, if they've been steeped in wickedness. Some people are saying that. Uh, but we ought not uh, get fretted about that. When I say I don't care, of course I care, but what I mean is it doesn't matter because we honour the office, we honour the throne. Um, and in honouring the throne, you see, a lot of people, their reaction to tyranny is to destroy all political offices of power. That's that's not that's just going to result in anarchy. That's just going to help the devil. But what we need to do is redeem and restore and rescue the offices of state from being defiled by people who have made covenant with the occult or made covenant with um, globalist powers or wicked forces. We we need godly men in the White House. We need a godly monarch on the throne of Britain. We need number 10 Downing Street to be a house of prayer. We need Butte House in Edinburgh to be a place where, you know, the glory of God is always there. And so whoever lives in these places and whoever is incumbent in the offices that they occupy, uh, we need those people on fire for Jesus. And that's John McPhee's vision that we would have such a king who the king of kings would live within and that person would be so sold out to him that in effect King Jesus would reign through him. You know, if you were sitting right now in 10 Downing Street and you're a Christian and you want to honour God, you'd be sitting saying, Lord, help me, help me here. Show me what to do, rule through me, reign through me, or govern through me. You know, we're called to governance, every one of us. Every single believer is called because Ecclesia, which is the Greek word for church, means governmental assembly, the place where decisions are made, laws are passed, uh, and directives are uh, issued for the purpose of governance. So we need to be that way minded. We need to uh, put away childish things and be mature saints and start functioning in this. The stone of destiny is there, not as some talisman uh, for us, but as a prophetic reminder and symbol and it, it has to be here because this is where God will bring about his end time move that we will see mighty things happening in the earth um, and I believe in and through a king on the British throne or a sovereign a monarch on the British throne but also his people his remnant people will walk in fullness will walk in uh, government governance in terms of um, the governance of God in the earth. We will be a true ecclesia. We will be a true remnant. We will function in these things as we're supposed to. We'll know our identity in Christ and we'll walk in it. Now, I've said quite a lot in this podcast. I may come back to this, but I, I just want you to see this prophetic symbol, prophetic sign, prophetic message that what Jacob saw, was heaven opened, an open heaven. Uh, and of course, we, we there are other scriptures that speak, I saw heaven opened and, and behold, uh, Jesus sitting on a white horse. Okay, let's let's just turn there very quickly. I, I, I want to just do that. Let's just turn to Revelation chapter, because we're talking about Revelation 19. We're talking about an open heaven. We're talking about heaven open. And we need heavens, the heavens opened over Scotland, don't we? We need to see Yahweh. We need to see angels ascending and descending. We need a glimpse into that glory realm. It says here, uh, verse 11 of Revelation 19, Now I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse, and he who sat on him was called faithful and true, and in righteousness he judges and makes war. We need this wonderful King of Kings and Lord of Lords to judge and make war right now, to go to war against the enemies of our nation, 
to fight for us, to make judgments, to make decrees, to be activated. And we, we need Jesus to get angry, folks, because it says that in his anger, uh, it says here in righteousness, he judges and makes war. His eyes were like a flame of fire. And over there in, in Psalm 110, this is, I believe, a parallel passage to this where it says, the Lord will execute kings in the day of his wrath. He shall judge among the nations. He will fill the places with dead bodies. He will execute the heads of many countries or he will destroy the heads of many countries. And I don't know if that means physical destruction, but I think what he's saying is he will destroy the offices of those, not necessarily obliterating the office, but destroy those who are abusing the office. We need that Jesus right now in the earth. They say, well, that's going to happen at the second coming. Well, folks, I, I just believe that we can believe for that right now, for God to get angry, to be activated, and to say enough's enough. You know, if he says enough's enough, that's all it takes. If he who is seated at the right hand of the majesty in high gets up in his anger, that's why it says to the leaders of nations, kiss the son lest he be angry and you perish in the way. We're needing that Jesus right now. And I believe this message of the stone of destiny is the Lord saying to us at this time, uh, and it's Scotland, of course, the Stone of Destiny is in Scotland. The Lord is saying to us at this time, you need, to, you need to get your orders from heaven. You need to get your destiny scroll from heaven as a people, as a nation, not just as individuals, but, but as a people, as a collective, as a corporate body of Christ. You need to step into the glory realm. You need to be the house that is perched between two worlds so that a, a desperate world can come to you. In the last days, the mountain of the Lord's house shall sit on top of all the other mountains. And all the nations shall come to it and say, teach us the ways of the Lord. We need to be that house, the mountain of the Lord's house. But we need to be sitting on top of all the other nations and that portal into glory. And we need to channel what's coming out of the glory into the earth. And we need to be standing there for the people of the earth so that they can have access to the glory as we tell them about our kingdom message. And it ain't just a message about, you know, our nice wee church fairs and fets and all that. It's not that. It's a kingdom message we teach them. Now, I could go on and on. I don't want to do that. I want to draw a halt here. I may come back to this subject as the Lord leads. But it's just so important for me to get this across to you folks that we see this, that we are a portal. We are the portal. We are the house of God in this new covenant era. And we are the portal to heaven. And that means that we allow heaven to flow through us, the glory realm, but we also are there available to the people of the earth who really need a saviour and who need the solutions that will come out of the ecclesia of God. The Lord bless you, folks. And I hope this has uh, spoken to your lives and been a blessing to you. God bless. <laughs>